All right, we're going to start a kind of a new uh, major topic here, and that major topic begins in Chapter 7. It's on the relationship between two variables. So um, we're talking about the relationship between two quantitative variables, okay? So um, what, you know, I want to describe this first off with the most important thing is we're looking at relationships. I guess I want to write that down. And what we mean by relationships, we mean does one variable affect another variable? Does one variable impact another variable? Um, and there's several different words and terminologies that we're going to learn, okay, but the best way to identify or see a relationship between two variables is with the scatter plot, okay? So um, let's take a look at a scatter plot first here. And I'm going to draw one here. And a scatter plot, we got the x variable. Remember, there's always two variables. We're talking about two variables. So some people refer to this as bivariate data. Bivariate is just a fancy way of saying bi meaning two and variate meaning variable. So two variable data. And we got x and we got y. We want to determine does x affect y. Now, the one thing we always want to stay away from is never use the word cause. Not right now at least, okay? Don't ever say that x causes y. We could say there's an association between x and y, and you've probably um, learned or heard the word correlation before, and we're going to learn a lot about that in a second here, but we would never say that x causes y. To, sh to show that one variable causes another, you need a well-performed experiment, and that uh, go, that's a lot of work to, con to do a well-conducted experiment, and um, we're going to learn about that next unit, but right now we cannot say that x causes y, okay? So let's say that we see a, let's see a scatter plot like this, okay? We've seen scatter plots before. Maybe that's one right there. Now, the first thing we want to name these x's and y's, okay? First off, the next most important thing is that x and y have to be two quantitative variables, okay? Um, you cannot have, you know, favorite color down here versus, you know, your favorite time of the year, fall, spring, and whatever, winter. Um, it's got to be two quantitative variables, okay, height versus weight, something like that, okay? Um, so two quantitative variables. Now, we want to name these variables, and we call X the explanatory variable. And um, it's called the explanatory variable. I'll explain an easy way to remember that in a second. And the Y is called, I'm sorry, I can't really fit in here. It's called the response variable. Okay? So one way of looking at that is X does the explaining and Y does the responding to X. So we say does Y, y responds to X. And uh, easy way to remember is that X is the explanatory variable. I don't know any other way that would be so simple to remember that. X is the explanatory variable. So X explains Y. It does not cause. explains. Um, so... That's easy to remember, hopefully, okay? Y responds to X, X explains Y, either way you want to look at it. So we've got this scatter plot here, and when we take a look at a scatter plot, there's several different things we want to kind of examine or look at. So actually, there's four main things we want to examine when we look at um, one of these scatter plots, okay? And the first thing we want to look at is the direction. We want to look at that scatter plot and see if we see a direction. Here's the deal. X is always increasing. X always increases. So we want to look at, does Y increase with it, which would be a positive relationship, a positive direction like the one I've drawn here, or does y decrease as x increases? So that would be a negative relationship. So you kind of look at the dots and you see are they generally going up or are they generally going down from left to right? And that's how you figure out direction. So you want to make sure you mention direction. It's a simple saying positive or negative. But don't use a plus or minus. Use up the word positive or negative. Number two, the second thing you want to look at is strength. Okay, and what we mean by strength is how strong is the relationship? Again, are the points really, really close together where it's a strong relationship? Wow, it really looks like X is explaining Y. Or is it kind of like, you know, all over the place where, I mean, for the most part, maybe you see a positive relationship, but at the same time, you know, they're all over the place. It's not really strong. Sometimes it seems to fit the pattern, other times it doesn't. Um, you know, obviously we're going to get to a point here, we talk about a line of best fit. Okay, I'm going to spoil the beans here. A line of best fit that goes through this data. And the closer your points are to that line, the stronger you're going to be. And we actually have a word that measures strength, okay? It's a word and it's correlation. 
So correlation is a really important word, and you've got to be very careful how you use the word correlation. First off, the letter we use for it is R, and the correlation is actually a number that measures strength. But you've got to be very careful because it measures only the strength of linear data, so it's got to look linear. So if you see a big curve in your data, like it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, and then it turns and comes down, 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 down. You cannot use the word correlation. You'd have to use the word like association, just something kind of a little bit more vague. Association is a little bit more vague, where correlation is more specific. It also has to have quantitative um, variables, okay? And if it's not quantitative, then you can't use the word correlation at all, okay? Um, so if you're dealing with like color or favorite ice cream or hair color or eye color or something like that's obviously categorical, don't use the word correlation. You can maybe use the word association, but not correlation. Um, for example, you might say that people with blonde hair oftentimes have blue eyes. So there's maybe a relationship between the color of your hair and the color of your eyes, but it would not be a correlation. It would be just an association, okay? Um, correlation is specific for linear and quantitative variables, okay? And it measures strength. It's an actual number that we can look at and say, oh, wow, that's a strong value versus so that's kind of a weak value. But really, when you're just looking at a graph, just looking at a scatter plot, you'd use terms like somewhat strong, very strong. Well, that's kind of weak or very weak, stuff like that, okay? The third thing we want to look at when we examine is uh, when you examine a scatter plot is form. And there's two big forms. We talk about linear form, which means it looks straight. It's never going to look perfectly straight. You have to understand that. It's going to look somewhat straight. And also we talk about curves. So obviously, if you're curved, you would not want to use the word correlation. But I want to show you how you could have curved data that is very, very, very strong, yet has no correlation. Let me explain what I mean by that. Let's say we're looking at two variables, the temperature at which you cook uh, brownies versus um, a scale of goodness, okay? So let's say a scale of goodness is a number system where you're going to rank the taste of the brownies 0 through 10. So well, that's a really ugly uh, scatter plot there. <laughs> Let me redraw that. Okay, so let's, let's, I want to show you this, and then I'm going to explain it. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So we got temperature that's explaining the taste of the scale of goodness here, okay? Now, I want you to think about this looking very curved like this. In fact, look how perfectly curved it is. That looks very strong in my mind, but you have to understand that it could be very strong, but it's curved, which means you would not use the word correlation here at all. It would actually have a correlation of zero. There'd be no correlation here because it's curved. Correlation is only for linear data. But let me explain why this should makes sense. If you cook the, the temperature really, really low, the brownies are not going to taste good at all because they're going to be all mushy and crappy tasting and they're going to taste raw. Somewhere in the middle is this perfect temperature where you, you cook them at this perfect temperature, they're going to taste absolutely perfect, nice and nice and soft and, and chewy, all that stuff. And then if you cook them too long at too high temperature, you're going to burn them and they taste crappy. So it definitely falls this curved data. So this is a very strong relationship, no doubt about it, strong curved relationship. It just is not linear. Linear, hence it has no correlation. So be very careful with that kind of uh, data there, okay? And the fourth thing we want to comment on when we're looking at a scatter plot is a general statement, okay? Very general statement here, okay? And let me give you an example of a general statement. Looking at this one up here, let's say that, um, let me scroll all the way up here so we get everything in here. Let's say that x is weight, I'm sorry, height. Let's say x, uh, x is height and y is weight. Okay, and we see that, hey, the taller you are, the more you weigh. Oh, that makes sense. If you're shorter, you don't weigh as much. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. There would be a strong association there. There would be a strong correlation there because it would definitely be linear. However, the general statement would be something really easy, like the taller you are, the more you weigh. That's something general. And again, this general statement needs to be in context. So don't just say as X goes up, Y goes up, or as X goes down, Y goes down. Make sure that you... Um, use the words of the problem. As the height of a person increases, the weight of the person increases, okay? So as x goes up, y goes up. So don't use x and y, you want to use it actually in context to the problem. So those are the four things you want to look at when you take a look at a scatter plot, okay? So um, this is a good example of a scatter plot right there that has a strong relationship, strong curved relationship. It just, it's, um, it's obviously not positive or negative because the positive and negatives cancel each other out, so there's actually no correlation there. Here's an example of a, a weak negative relationship. Okay, you you can kind of see this downward trend here, right? But it's not very strong. Look how scattered it is. Okay, so you'd say it's negative. It looks kind of linear, but it's so weak it's actually hard to tell. 
Um, but be very careful with this idea right here. Don't let anybody forget this. This is a um, correlation of zero, yet it's very strong relationship, just has no correlation. Because correlation, like we said earlier, is specific for linear data. So please make sure you understand that, okay? All right. Um, I don't want to uh, waste too much more time uh, um, of your time right now because I just want this to kind of be a general overview of scatter plots. But I want to talk about one more thing here. Um, the idea here in the future, and this is what we're going to be learning over the course of this unit here, is that when you have this data here, okay, and again, this is x, this is y, um, we can even call this height and weight if we want to kind of be a little bit more specific right now. So if I'm looking at this, what are the four things I want to mention? I'd say, well, that's a positive graph, that's a fairly strong graph, and it's definitely linear. So I could say all that in one sentence. So the scatter plot appears to be um, positive, fairly uh, very fairly strong or very strong and linear relationship and then you would say that general statement is as height goes up the weight goes up okay but obviously we're going to get to a point where we want to find a line of best fit that goes through this data so that we can try to use that line to make predictions for weights that we might not know, okay? And we're going to learn a lot more about that um, over the course of the next couple of days. But you, I want to talk one last time here, one last second here about the word correlation, okay? Correlation is a value R, and it measures strength, okay? Um, measures strength. Got to be careful, though. It only measures strength of quantitative variables, and it's got to be a linear pattern. If it's not linear, it's going to have a very weak or an R value of zero. I don't care how strong it looked, like we saw the temperature versus the scale of goodness, Brownie's thing example there. Um, the R value is the formula to find it is very complicated. It uses Z scores and stuff like that. I'm never going to ask you to calculate it for me, okay? It's always going to be given to you in some way, or you're going to use the calculator to find it, okay? But I want to just want to talk a little bit about it. It is a value that goes from negative one to positive one, okay? It can never be any lower than negative one. It can never be any higher than positive one. Obviously, zero is in the middle. So let's talk about zero in the middle. That would be no correlation. No correlation whatsoever would be zero. The closer you are to one, and the closer you are to negative one, the stronger you are. Negative simply means it's a negative relationship where it's going down. And here it would be going up, would be positive. So a perfect straight line of data points would be a one. Perfect straight line going down of data points would be a negative one. The closer you are to zero, the weaker you become. So obviously, if we cut this in half here and do a 0.5 and a negative 0.5, if when you're inside this negative 0.5 or 0.5, that's when you are probably weak. If you want to try to have a cutoff, that's when you're going to be weak. That's when you're going to see data that maybe you can tell it's going up, but it's got a lot of scatter to it. Maybe you can tell it's going down, but it's got a lot of scatter to it. The closer you get to one, the stronger you're going to be. And I want to emphasize one last thing here. No data is exactly one. In the real world, at least, no data is going to fit this exact model or an exact negative model, okay? It could be close. So we're going to see a lot of R values of 0 0.90, 0 0.95, 0 0.99. It's going to be very, very, very strong, but it'll never be exactly one because that just, you know, theoretically we can think about it, but in the real world, you know, no data is going to be perfectly going up exactly one for one, okay? So that's a little, uh, little uh, info there on R, okay? Um, negative one, positive one, strong, close your R to zero, weak, all right? So um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, explain the beginnings of this stuff a little bit here, and hopefully you understand some of the key points I made, and um, we'll learn more as the week goes on, obviously. All right.